So. Get it on the Newton side here. So first off, oops, get that on the Newton side. All right, so right now they're both reading somewhere around zero. All right, I'm gonna hold mine still and pull. Uh, less than that. Oh, sorry. So, all right, so what's yours reading? 20 Newtons. Yeah, mine's somewhere around 15. There's friction involved here. Uh, why don't you double the force? 40? Yep, and I'm at 40 also. I haven't done anything other than just hold this here. But every time she exerts a force, it automatically forces me to exert the exact same amount of force. Pulling backwards. So she's pulling toward her, and you're not moving, but it's still, the force is going that way, right? Right, There's because the forces come in pairs. For every force, she exerts a force that way on the ring, and therefore there must be a force, the ring must be pulling back on her, and that's showing up on mine. I, I'm getting the reaction force to what her work is. So that's sort of the basis of Newton's laws. The other basis is that there are no favorites. Physics does not look at, ooh, that's the human, so the rules are different for the human than it is for the block. No, the physics looks at everything basically as an object. Okay, and, so for six, when it says the small car is pulling the large truck, and it's speeding up to a cruising speed. So what, you're telling me they would be having the same forces? Forces? Yes, I would. Why is they, that? On each other. I'm not saying that they have the same total force. I'm saying that the force they exert on each other is the same magnitude. Hmm, okay. All right, Brianna, it looked like you were having a moment there. I am, I just, it, it I feel like it's, the car is pushing the truck, and the truck is moving. If they were equal, they wouldn't be moving. Well, it was kind of like what uh, you just did, though, because you were the car has wasn't. to have a greater force to push the truck. All right. Why don't we take a look at it in a little bit more detail? Right? I just, I, it's did I do the Dobbins question? Um, I didn't do the Dobbins for the uh, chapter two master set, did I? Doesn't sound familiar. Right. Bells. I had it on a test uh, early on. You had a mule who basically was making the argument of if he pulls on the cart with the same amount of force that the cart pulls on him, but opposite directions, he would never walk. Mm -hmm. And so the farmer had to explain to old Dobbins what was really going on and why he could accelerate. So let me start out with Dobbins and then we'll move up to the van or to the farm. Horse needs to go backwards. I don't know how to get away. Horse. Woo. Or big dog. <laughs> Case you can't tell. That is decisional. Alright. It's somehow magically attached. To the, for the sake of this, let's assume that this well, you know what, we'll sort of treat it separately. So if I look at the force diagram, I got a carp here and baby markers. Cart, rope connecting between them. More of a sawhorse. Ground. So let's talk about the forces that are acting in this particular problem. Let's go to our checklist. All right. There's friction. Say it again. There's friction. Between what and what? Uh, the horse and the ground. All right. So which way is the friction acting on the horse? Mm -hmm. 
So let's do friction last. It, it's the complicated one. I appreciate you wanting to jump to the complicated one first. Let's do the simpler ones though. There is tension on the rope, both ends. All right. So I have a tension acting this way. And then and, back to the cart. And then on this end. Back to the horse. And again, if you want to put subscripts on it, it's not, well, let's assume it's ideal right now, so you don't need subscripts, but if we put subscripts on it, these two would have the same subscript. Those two would have a different subscript. All right, so, tension, done. Weight of the horse. Acting. Down. Uh, weight of horse, and then. Back to the horse. Same with the cart. Weight of the cart. Normal horse, up on the horse, up on the cart. That's basically the contact. We have contacts between rope and cart, but we're calling that tension, rope and horse, tension. And then we just have horse ground and cart ground. So normal force done, weight done. Other? No. Okay. And friction. So, Bailey? I have a, I have a question about this. Okay, so um, the FT's right there coming off of the horse and off the wagon, not the rope. But the FT is coming off. Are you, do you know which ones I'm talking about? So you've got, you're talking about that tension and this tension? Yes. Okay. okay. So you would say that the one coming off the horse, that would be the force to pull the wagon. Tension. Is that correct? The, the tension that is pulling the wagon is a reaction to that tension, which is the reaction to that tension, which is the reaction to that tension. Okay. Yeah, so they're very much related. What would you... What would you say about the one coming off the wagon? This one? Yes. So the horse is pulling the wagon. What would you say about the wagon's force acting onto the horse? I would say the wagon's also pulling the horse. What? This is the sort of a, the crux of Newton's third law is the fact that they're pulling on each other. By saying that, by treating the horse as the dominant figure. Yes. Because it, in reality, yes, I know the horse is the one who's driving it. The cart's not going to move on its own. But if you think about, I have these two objects here. There's a tension between them. From a physics point of view, we are not going to put dominance on one side or the other. We're not going to go, oh, the horse is pulling the cart, or the cart's pulling the horse. They're pulling on each other. Okay. The horse is trying to make the cart go that way. The cart's trying to pull the horse back. <laughs> Apparently it's not, you know. No, I just need to stop thinking. Like it that makes I sense know it. when you read it. Yeah. And what I what we're, I'm seeing in the book and the problems and whatnot, but I just it doesn't make sense logically. But I, I need to stop thinking logically. It's my problem. <laughs> <laughs> I have an illustration that might help. I, I, I disagree, but <laughs> it's not logical. <laughs> that they equal opposite reactions. The third Why are you skipping the third ball? And I get everything it. is the third ball. Oh, like, the second and third, I cover it. Would the horse be putting more force on the cart than the cart is coming on the horse? No, it would be the same amount. So let's, let's actually finish it off and hopefully maybe something else will play. We have, we've ignored friction. We have to come back to friction. Uh, um, Noelia? I mean, I, it's not just the same question. It's literally all the same question. Three boxes of one tool that must carry Newton's force and what the tension between them. Right. I thought I figured it out. Okay, so I all right, we'll, we'll take we'll go down that path and we'll come back to this. Okay. Because it's it's a simpler example, I think, illustrating the same thing. So you got the three boxes. I assume this is the problem you're talking about. Mm -hmm. The masses are all the same, yeah. Yeah. so I'm just going to make it uh, 10 kilograms each. Mm -hmm. And then 30 newtons pulling it. Mm -hmm. In this particular case, they all have the same accelerator because they're attached. This, this one's not suddenly gaining on this, the one in the middle, that they're all attached by a rope. Some is being pulled. Their acceleration is all the same from our point of view, from what's generally called the lab frame or the problem frame. Wow. 
In other words, you're standing on the sideline watching this and you see these three, th these three things move relative to you. Now, if their acceleration is all the same, so if I've got, I think it was three newtons, but I'm making it 30 now. So 30 newton force, I'm pulling 30 kilograms. What is going to be the acceleration of the whole thing? 60. 60? Not 60. 30. Not 30. 900. We have F equals MA. The force being applied is 30 newtons. The mass I'm pulling is 30 kilograms times the acceleration. Sorry, I missed the number. One. Yes, five by 30. Acceleration is one meter per second squared. So whatever else happens, we need to make sure that they each have an acceleration of one meter per second squared. So now let's just take a look at this one. I got a rope in between, if I did a fourth diagram, I got tension acting here. I got three different, I'm gonna call three ropes. I have this tension acting here. I got the rope with the tension acting at both ends and then I have the tension acting back here. I'm gonna call it FT1. And I'm gonna to try to write it bigger. FT1, there's that rope, FT1. I'm assuming they're ideal. So for this first segment, I've got the rope in between, and then the rope exerts the tension on these two boxes. And now I've got another rope. FT2, FT2, FT2. Why do those have the same subscript? Say it again. Why do they have the same subscript? That's a one, that's a two. I mean for the one and the one. If it's an ideal rope. Okay, I see. Then the tension at each end is the same. I can, yeah, we're eventually at some point, we're gonna have to come up with some concession to make it solvable. Okay. And then this one has this extra 30 Newtons pulling on it to the right. Now there's gonna be some 30 Newton force acting back on whatever is pulling it. We don't care about that. So that's basically the force diagram right there. If I want to figure out this tension here, it's 10 kilograms. Well, I know that that tension is equal to the mass times the acceleration. Because that is the only, that's the net force acting on it. If you want to, Put it on the planet, then you have weight and normal force, but they're going to cancel each other out. It doesn't have to take place on the planet. So I know my acceleration is one meter per second squared. And so this tension right here would be 10 newtons. Which means this tension pulling back on this one is 10 newtons. The net force acting on this one. So the total force, the net force acting on mass two, is gonna be the mass two times its acceleration, which is 10 kilograms times one meter per second squared, or 10 newtons. So that has a net force of 10 newtons, this has a net force of 10 newtons, but 10 newtons is pulling back on it, so what does this force need to be? So the total is 10. Zero. Uh, sorry, 10 in that direction. Oh. Zero would have a 10, would give a total force direction. of 10, but that would be in the wrong direction. It would be 20. Yep, so this is 20 newtons. Wait, explain that. Because you would, you would subtract because they're going opposite directions. So you need it to be 10 also, so that one has to be 20. Okay. So you would do 20 minus 10 and get 10? Yes. Okay. A lot of duplication of numbers here, unfortunately. We should have picked different numbers. So FT2, the tension in the second rope here is 20 newtons. So that's 20 newtons. And I know you started off with the problem, but apparently I'm getting as far away from you as possible. I'm sorry about that. 
I guess the horse took up too much space over there. <laughs> okay, good. And so on this over here, does it still work? Oh, I got 30 newtons pulling to the right, I have 20 newtons pulling back. Yeah, still 10. So that would so be 10. Total force is 10. So the acceleration is one, which is what we said to begin with. What was the question? This was at one of the textbook couple of problems. Okay. So an example of the second object is pulling on the first object with that 10 newtons of force, but the first object is pulling back on the second one with 10 newtons. But there's an additional force here causing the acceleration to the right. We don't have that quite down that for the horse yet, but there's got to be an additional force involved over there. All right, are you good with this one? Yeah. That was an enthusiastic yeah for those who missed it on the camera. So there's got to be additional forces involved here, and frictions that's going to be ultimately the key. Before we do friction, let's just picture if this were ice. I've got something over there that I'm hauling, and I've got my rope here, and I want to pull it towards me, but I'm on a, on a frictionless surface. When I pull on the rope, what's going to happen? Nothing. Something will happen. So you'll fall. Object will Assume that I have enough coordination not to fall. <laughs> now would both go this way. The lighter object would move. Hmm. Now somebody else that slide. Say again? You are slide. Which way? Towards the object. Somebody over here said it. Towards the object. Towards the object. Yeah. Because if I start pulling on the rope this way, what's going to happen is I'm going to get pulled towards it. It's going to come towards me. We're going to meet somewhere in between. Now, where are we going to meet depends upon the relative masses. If we're, if I'm assuming I'm 100 kilograms, if I'm pulling 100 kilogram mass, we meet in the middle. If I have more mass than it does, we're going to be closer to here. It has more mass than I do. We're going to be over there. The greater mass is not going to move as much or not going to accelerate as much. So here, when you're thinking about friction, which way will the friction be acting on the horse? Opposite to what? The direction in which the horse is going. So it will be going that way. If that is the case. And spoiler, it's not. If that is the case, what force would accelerate the horse to that way, to the right? There's got to be something that makes them go that way. Acceleration? Not a force. Now let's think about it in terms of why the friction, so the, conceptually the friction can't be acting backwards because then you, you have no other forces left. We've already gone down the checklist. There's nothing else that we haven't, nothing else is needed for this particular problem. If it were frictionless, and the horse is pulling on the cart this way. And yes, I've suddenly given the horse hands. So he's pulling on the horse, it's pulling on the cart like this. If it were frictionless, which way would the horse go? Towards the cart. Uh, Therefore, friction opposes that motion. Because he's pulling the cart. Well, if the cart weren't there, he would, the friction would still be acting that way. Unless the horse, I guess some horses can back up. All reverse. horses. Yeah, I see what you're Now, from a more direct physics that friction opposes the relative motion, he's when he's walking, he's got his, about to say paw, no paw, foot, hoof. He's got his hoof on the, my wife would be so embarrassed. All right. He has the hoof on the ground and he's basically pushing back with the hoof. The friction is opposing the motion of the hoof on the ground. Just like the car, right? Because the tire is going that way? Yes. Okay. Yes. So friction is acting to the right. And so when you, I guess initially we started out with, if the cart is pulling with the, if those two forces are equal to magnitude, why would it ever accelerate? 
because there are other forces acting on the horse. And so now the cart, there is friction acting on the wheel on the cart. Which way is the wheel going to turn? It's going to turn to the left. That friction will be going to the right. Because the wheel would go like that. So friction would be acting that way. The question is, why is the wheel going like that? I have no idea. If it were frictionless, which way would the wheel turn? I don't know. It would slide. It would slide, yes. Oh, yeah, true. So what you're opposing is that motion. So friction's acting that way on the wheel. Okay. Now, the well, difference between this and the cart. Uh, I guess cart and horse. Oh. Horse. Okay, but his friction. hoof is acting that way, but you put friction in the other direction. Yes, I did. All right. What's different with the wheel? The wheel is not driving itself. The, in the car situation, the engine in the car is, is the gears in the drive shaft is trying to turn the wheels. Those wheels would turn in a frictionless situation. And so, in this case, the horse is forcing his feet to move. Yes. So the, the feet are moving because the horse is will, wills it or whatever, however a horse is thinking. The cart, on the other hand, doesn't have any internal drive mechanism. It is only moving because something is gonna pull it or push it or apply this additional force to it. This friction right here is making the wheel turn, as opposed to some internal mechanism. That's the big difference. In the car situation that you mentioned, and in the horse situation, there's an internal mechanism that's trying to get something to move, regardless of the environment. The car does not have anything internal that's trying to get it to move. That's the big difference there. Yes, Mira? So what's the difference? with a box sliding on the table. I thought you said friction always goes in the opposite direction of the force. Friction opposes desired relative motion. In other words, the desired... For me, it's always, if it's frictionless, what's going to happen? Okay, friction's going to oppose the frictional situation. So on the box sliding, so if I have a ramp and I put a box on it and it starts sliding down, it's being pulled down because of the force of gravity. 